Oh, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Annie Bryant, and I'm a PhD student working with Ben Fulcher and Max Shine at the University of Sydney. Um, today, I'll be sharing about the project that's formed the core of my PhD thesis, um, in which I've been systematically comparing local dynamics and pairwise coupling in the brain. So let's first think about multiple scales of activity going on in the brain at any given moment. We can measure some sort of readout or proxy for neural activity at these six points throughout the brain, which given the multi-scale nature of the brain could correspond to individual neurons, to populations of neuron or nuclei, uh, all the way up through macro-scale brain regions. And if we measure some unit of activity over time across our six nodes or brain regions, we get this multivariate time series where the rows represent our recording sites or processes, and the columns represent time points, usually corresponding to imaging frames. And one way we might slice and dice uh, this MTS, or multivariate time series, is to zoom in on one brain region and compute properties of its local activity, like the fractional amplitude of low-frequency fluctuations. We could also look at statistical dependencies between time series derived from two different brain regions, allowing us to measure the functional connectivity uh, using a metric like the Pearson correlation coefficient. And we can keep adding to the number of nodes or processes that we examine concurrently to measure higher order interactions in which we consider three or more time series all at the same time. And spoiler alert, while I'm super interested in higher order interactions, they're beyond the scope of my PhD thesis and indeed the scope of this talk. So we can broaden our scope to put the brain in the context of a complex system, um, which is a system with individual components, be it neurons or brain regions, that each exhibit their own local dynamics and yet collectively give rise to emergent behaviors, often interacting in a nonlinear manner. And there are myriad examples of complex systems across disciplines and domains, from city structure where local dynamics of infrastructure, neighborhoods, and public policy give rise to properties like density, traffic patterns, and culture, as well as in economics with natural, uh, national growth or recession, physics with fluid dynamics, and social networks like Facebook friend community formation. And I bring up these cross-domain examples to underscore how we can benefit from interdisciplinary methods to better understand brain activity at multiple scales and in multiple contexts. So I mentioned before that you might be interested in summarizing the activity of an individual brain region. Um, and one way to comprehensively quantify dynamical signatures of local activity would be to use the highly comparative time series analysis toolbox that my supervisor, Ben Fulcher, developed during his PhD work at Oxford. Uh, and this brings together thousands of interpretable time series features from across diverse disciplines with clear algorithms that capture properties from data distribution to model fitting to information theory. And if you're interested in summarizing the functional connectivity between pairs of brain regions, you might consider using the Python Toolkit of Statistics for Pairwise Interactions, or PySpy, developed in lead by Oliver Cliff, who is a former postdoc with Ben. And this brings together over 200 measurements of interactions between two time series, from the Pearson correlation coefficient to spectral Granger causality to information theory-based metrics like transfer entropy or directed information. And so prior work, largely by collaborators and friends of the group, has demonstrated the value of applying these comprehensive data-driven approaches to multimodal neuroimaging data. Um, here I've highlighted work in the local dynamic space driven by Golia Shafei during her PhD in both fMRI and MEG data. Uh, as part of the PySpy paper from last year, we demonstrated its utility in both EEG and resting state fMRI, and more recently, Zhenqi Liu and Bratislav Mizich's lab uh, at the MNI thoroughly benchmarked the PySpy library across the Human Connectome Project fMRI dataset. Enter me, who is really interested in understanding when it's beneficial to look at local dynamics, pairwise coupling, or the synergistic combination therein. So we formulated this analytic framework to systematically evaluate the benefits of local dynamics, looking at either multiple time series features in one brain region at a time, uh, or, um, or all local dynamics, sorry, I'll go back, or all local dynamics across all brain regions, um, and then the benefits of pairwise coupling, looking at one statistic for pairwise interactions or functional connectivity metric across all regions at a time, or lastly, the benefits of combining information from both local dynamics and pairwise coupling altogether. 
And so as a translationally relevant case study, and presumably the reason I've been invited to participate in this session, we demonstrate the systematic approach for case control classification of four neuropsychiatric disorders, schizophrenia, bipolar one disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and autism spectrum disorder. And in all of the models that we tested, we evaluated classification performance using balanced accuracy after applying inverse probability weighting across 10 repeats of tenfold cross-validation. I will fly through some of our key results just to give an overview of the types of hypothesis-generating insights that this approach offers, each of which could and should warrant further study in an external validation cohort. So first, we were surprised to find that in schizophrenia and bipolar 1 disorder, the dynamical signatures of resting state fMRI activity within individual brain regions could distinguish cases from controls with up to 72% cross-validated balanced accuracy, which is surprising given that these neuropsychiatric disorders um, are generally framed as disorders of distributed dysfunction that cannot be pinpointed to one specific locus of dysfunction. And this particular analysis is beneficial because it allows us to link local brain dynamics with region-specific data on gene expression, anatomical changes, and stimulation analysis. At a high level, time series features sensitive to linear dynamics like the centroid of the power spectral density or the Pearson correlation coefficient performed well, particularly for schizophrenia and autism spectrum disorder. Uh, and this is in line with growing work indicating that linear models are both suitable and sufficient to capture resting state brain activity, which suggests that in the low temporal resolution regime of resting state fMRI, brain dynamics are approximately linear. Lastly, we found that several measurements of functional connectivity could significantly distinguish cases from controls for schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and autism spectrum disorder, including the Pearson correlation coefficient, which I've starred. But moreover, we found that across statistics for pairwise interactions, performance was further boosted when we also included whole brain maps of intra-regional dynamics, which is notable given the considerable increase in dimensionality to the classifier. And so we're excited about the prospect for enhanced insights from functional neuroimaging data that can be gleaned from systematically combining both intra-regional dynamics um, and pairwise coupling going forward. Synergy. So zooming out, this approach is flexible and generalizable across neural time series data spanning multiple modalities and timescales. So in this first project that I've shared today, we focused on resting state fMRI data as a reasonable starting point, but the approach is readily amenable to other modalities like EEG, which offers far higher temporal resolution that may enable novel insights with nonlinear properties of intra-regional dynamics and or directed properties of inter-regional inter coupling. Calcium imaging, MEG, and ECOG could also be evaluated. Uh, really, any spatial neuroimaging data sampled over a time window is suitable. And we also used data-driven subsets of the full feature space for both HCTSA and PySpy, although I should say none of the features were specifically optimized for human neuroimaging data. They were derived from um, a data-driven classification challenge using beef spectrograms and yoga poses and gosh knows what else. Um, so future work could um, expand upon, um, sorry, I'll go back, future work could expand upon um, using a, a broader pool of initial time series features that may better capture relevant neural dynamics. And lastly, while we demonstrated the approach on neuropsychiatric disorders here today, this approach can be applied across clinical settings that include case control analysis, as well as MRI fingerprinting, where resting state fMRI activity can uniquely identify an individual across scanning sessions, or stimulation analysis, employing deep brain stimulation or even optogenetics in an animal model. So with that, I will end and thank you all very much for your time and the organizers for inviting me, as well as my wonderful supervisors and collaborators, particularly those whose names are in bold, um, as my wonderful co-authors on the associated preprint and the generous organizations that have supported my thesis. Thank you.